3.12 a.m. Everything so aligned, I had to do this. You know what I'm saying? So I'm dedicating this to Carlos, to my brother, to the struggle. 1975, real shit. You know, it's crazy. I was writing this before my brother texted me. He called me in the middle of me writing this shit. You know what I mean? He sent a text, so I'm gonna be in the city, 735. You know what I mean? So that's how real this is. That's how the stars align. Uh, I'm more good than gooder. Praying the Buddha. Sejan like Kyrie. It's sad season. Stay humble. Like Kendrick. We wrote the blueprint and called it the golden laws of success. Y'all finished or y'all done yet? January 2021. Says the calendar on my desk. My nigga, y'all can't see. And we up next. Bandwagon, the good buses ain't left yet. Partner with Airbnb, now look at me, look at me. Long clock, story of a real OG, product of OGB, word is bond. Don't hate if your girl fond of me. We rock Hershey's, chess moves, checkmate. I never play my motherfucking queen. Uh, Carlos, I love you to death, my nigga. <laughs> 1975, classic piece. It's just real sick. Um, La familia, not familiar. Depart from me as if I never knew you. Me and Los caught the mega busted Chattanooga in 2019. Had to get the lure by any means. Now I mean, living on my means to step my greens. Now we stronger than Popeyes. Lines through the door like geometry. Geometric shapes on Broadway. Word to Alex has crossed the street. Los snow is round his way. 312 on the motherfucking way. I lost some love like Trey Songz, but don't get me wrong, your girl could still get stole, but some shit get old, we got different goals. It's 2021, and niggas still ain't got gold. Niggas came before Columbus like Abakari. Uh, 302, let's, let's test me. He's like, tomorrow he gonna touch down. It's like, I say. Yeah, messed up on that last part. It's all good, real slow. Like this beat. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, it was nice, man. That's nice, huh? Yeah, that was nice, though. Yeah, man. Stars aligned. That was at 312 a.m., man. <laughs> On September 19th, man. You remember that? No, I'm yeah, yeah. Yo, man. So, so how you feel, man? This is uh before we get into it, man. This is the wealth is a state of mind podcast where we interview authors to talk about their projects, their works, what they got coming out. So ironically, my brother about to drop his book, 1975, March the 12th, exclusively, word the lows, exclusively on no more suits, LLC.com, man. So so Lowe's, how you feel right now, man? Like, you know, it, you know, it's been a long time coming, man. So like, you know, how does it feel to be right here near the finish line? Like, you know what I mean? We we less than a month out, you know what I'm saying? So What's on your mind, man? What's your emotions right now? Man, I'm on, I'm on cloud nine right now, man. I'm still, you know, when that book came to my when that book came to my door, man, I looked at it and I'm like, I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I did this, you know what I mean? Uh 1975 is my heart and my soul, man. You know, I live it every day. You know. So, like, I remember, man, asking you, I mean, really, it was like, what, 2018, it was like August, and really this all came about from, you know, conversations about, you know, mom, about, you know, how you grew up, things like that. Um, I just wanted to know more, you know what I mean? And ironically, I was, I was in the mix of getting ready to push out Book of Rhymes, you know what I mean? That was set to release in, um, you know, September of 2018. But then, like, something just was like, put on my spirit, it was like, man, Carlos need to write a book because he got a, a wealth of information. And I remember you telling me, you was like, man, nah, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't, I don't want to write no book. That's not who I am, man. So, so do you... What, what what changed your mind? What was it? I know you was like, you know, give me three days. What was it that was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing, man. Well, you know, I didn't have the 
ain't have the, the knowledge, but I ain't gonna say I didn't have the knowledge, but I ain't had the tools to write a book. You know what I mean? So I just put that on the back burner. Um, but like you said, you, you have a lot of you have a lot of stuff to talk about, you know, and you can put it down on paper. And I was like, all right, give me three days. So that third day came around. I text you, know, like, yeah, let's do this. You know what I mean? Um, you still got that text message? I think I do. I don't know. I don't know. Because sometimes I I uh, erase everything in my, my phone and start all over. You know what I'm saying? And if you find that, that's going to be worth some money down the line, man. You know, um, like... This project, dude, I tell you, I mean, it's really dope that I get to interview you, you know what I mean? Just the, just the whole concept of me interviewing you about, you know, your book is it, really dope, man, because we came a long way, man. Um, you know, I was sitting thinking um, the other day about how um, the conversation me and you had right before mama passed, right? It was literally right. the day before, you know what I'm saying? And like, I was telling Kiana yesterday, I'm like, every moment is like a, you know, a podcast, you know what I mean? Every every time you have a conversation, every time you have a sit down with somebody and like, we've been talking our whole life, you know? Um, so I think that it's creative that we, we're here now, you know what I mean? Um, sharing our, our conversations with, you know, with the world, like, um, and, and where we are and, and how far we came and, and our struggle, like, um, you know, like even with No More Soups, bro, like that, that shit global now, man. Like people in Ireland, people overseas, people in London, people in the Middle East is looking at what we putting out, what India putting out, you know what I'm saying? And so like, um, that's just, that's, it's really God, man. And, and, and it's really, an honor to to be here to be to to share this platform with you you know what i mean like and, and that was the whole concept really for no more suits was like how you said you didn't have the tools you know what i mean and so like that's really what the vision for no more suits was was to provide those tools for right. people right. like yourself you know what i mean who come from these inner cities and and to tell their story from from their point of view, um, you know what I mean, like uh, about these these inner cities, which which mean so much more to us than you know what I mean, just like growing up, you know, uh, rough. It, it it go back like you know everybody has a struggle, you know what I mean. Everybody mm -hmm. everybody you know get it out the mud per se, but then you peel back. With your book, you know what I mean? We peel back layers and we find out, like we found out a wealth of information about our family before the projects, you know what I mean? And I right, right. the 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 creative thing about or the dope or unique thing about it was, you know, we've been sold that we came here, you know, on ships, but how could we come here on ships if we came from the Dakota region? So talk a little bit more about that, like what what you learn just by, you know, putting this project together, like, you know what I'm saying? Like just in these three years, cause you already had a wealth of knowledge about the family. You really, you feel what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But doing more research, you discovered a lot more stuff. So yeah. talk a little bit about that, man. Um, You know, with, we come from four generations of William H. Uh, Jones, the second, which I learned was the first black electrician here in Louisville in the state of Kentucky. I didn't know that, you know what I'm saying? All I knew that he was Mason, you know? Uh, I didn't know that he was a 33rd degree Mason, but I knew he was Mason. Uh, I knew that we came from indigenous people indians we have indians that's what mama told me we you know we have indians uh i tried to 
talk to grandma about it, but she she didn't want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which, you know, with all respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with you all know. respect. I didn't, I didn't ask no more, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I wanted to know about the family like you did. You know what I mean? I, I my mind was open to a lot of a lot of things. You know, uh, yeah, we come from our family comes from first generation Lakota tribe. You know, I didn't know that I shoot by uh, fifth grandfather has was you know a chief. You know, I didn't know that. I knew that mama had a mama had a peace pipe, you know what I mean, in the house, you know, with a feather at the end. You Man, know I didn't know saying? that for real. Uh I mean, I didn't I didn't know this. So, you know, so that I, so that pipe, like what where did that come from, you know? Uh shoot. I don't know. She had it from way back when, man. Cause I know she had a lot of stuff that was passed down for a very long time that I didn't, you know, things that we seen around the crib, you know, Cox Boulevard and, you know, Cox Boulevard is talked about, you know, in, in the book, but like a lot of things like that, uh, China cabinet she had, things like that. I'm looking at old pictures in, in the uh, family, in the family book and stuff like that in the uh, photo books. And they was, you know, grandma was at grandma's house uh, a while ago looking through old photos from like 1970 but yeah. the photo book was from 1970 so it was older than that and I seen the the china cabinet in there and I'm like dang that's that's a you know yeah. what I'm saying? stuff like that been passed down for a very long time yeah um you know I've learned you know since I've written 1975 Uncle Stan you know what I mean he said he used to lay the roof on uh can take on the headquarters of can take fried chicken so okay. his name is carved in in one of the bricks you know what i'm saying i'm like dang you know so louisville is where it is is where the heart is you know what i'm saying uh uh louisville is we built pretty much we built louisville okay. you know what i'm saying uh, I grown uh great great grandfather William H Jones the second, the first black electrician here in Louisville, Kentucky, the first black license in the state of Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dang. I look at I look up at the at the lights at work. I'm like, dang. Our people did this, and you know, you know what's interesting, do? man. Um, you know, me just doing my my research as a, um, I guess you could call me uh, Larry Little man. Uh, right, right. He, he gave me the title of a historian, so I right. got I got to wear that, man. So, uh, cause I uh, when I when I met Larry Little, you know, uh, for the project, you know, that was part of my role was to go out and do research, you know, on your behalf, uh, so that we can insert that those those right. uh facts empirical facts about, you know, even Winston. So I, I met with Larry Little and I came in and he was, uh, he, you know, if anybody know Larry Little, man, or Dr. The Honorable Larry Little, you know what I mean? The Black Panther, and they just released that uh, Judah, Judas and the Messiah, ironically, mm -hmm. uh, this year. I'm talking about the Black Panther. Anybody that know uh, Larry, he, he's a very tough brother. So, I came in, I said, how you doing, sir? He was like, who your people? You from Winston-Salem? Who your people? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, you know, right. I said, Gordon and Darrell. He said, who they, where they from? And I was like, right. my mom had a salon, stuff like that. Then he was getting ready. This was the, um, this was like the 50 year anniversary for the Black Panther Party, it's 2019. And it lets you know how long we've been putting in work for this, this project, man. I'm excited that it's, you know, it's here. Um, yeah. He was like, you know who this lady is right here? I said, that's Joanne Little. He said, I like you, brother. He said, a lot of people <laughs> wouldn't be able to answer that question. I said, yes, sir. I, I do my research, man. I knew I knew I had to, 
I knew I had to uh, prepare for this conversation. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was like, that's right. Joanne Little. And then, you know, the Joanne Little case happened in, you know, 1975 as well, too. So, like, you know, we highlight that, man. And, and, and so, like, uh, the point I was making was, like, uh, you know, it's, it's so much stuff in this in this book, you know, and like uh, when I was doing my research, um, he gave me, you know, Larry Little gave me the title historian. And I take pride in that because like a lot of people from our culture, a lot of people like from my generation, you know what I mean? They, they're not into history, you know what I mean? Even probably you could say that for your generation too. Mm -hmm. um, but when you, I've always been one to go against the crowd, so and I, like, I know you mentioned it before, too. You said you like history. Right. So I'm doing my research. Uh, and the first, one of the first Masons was Yim Hotel, um, mm -hmm. who was in Kemet. And he built the pier, the step pyramids for, you know, the King uh, Dozier. You know what I mean? That's like 2700 B.C., right? So. Right that lineage, you know what I mean, may be connected to us through blood. However, um, for our our direct lineage, our ancestors, you know, William H., uh, for them to be master masons and architects and to construct and wire the electricity for the city of Louisville speaks volumes. And then here we are in 2021, you know what I mean, architecting books in, in different ways. Like we we labeling this project, you know, a non-traditional history book. Cause you're gonna, you know, like like Hove say, you know what I mean? I give you the truth. It's just his ghetto point of view. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. uh, so I think that culturally your book, man, is gonna open the minds of a lot of people, a lot of our people from from Trey Foe to the River City, the 502, Louisville, man. You know what I mean? Um, talk about, man, like, I want you to talk about stuff that you don't talk about. You said you was on the bus the other day, man, talking to somebody about your, talk about them experiences, man. Like, them with, with the city, with them streets talking about, like, you know what I mean? I, I know they 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 amped up for, for, you know, for your release, man. Talk about them experiences that you've been having. Mm -hmm. With, with people, man, you know? Man, this, I mean, it's mind boggling, you know what I mean? Mind blowing, you know what I'm saying? I was, like I, like you said, I was on the bus the other day. Matter of fact, it was, it was last Wednesday. I had, I was getting off from GE and I was walking in the snow, dog, for real. Cause my uh, my coworker, you know, she didn't come cause of uh, you know family issues. But uh, I don't want to say too much about that. But you know, uh, I was walking, and from where I work to the to the exit is like two, probably about a mile and a half. So I'm walking, you know, walking in the snow, or whatnot. So there's a dude pulls over to the side and uh, he says, hey man, you need a ride? You don't see that every day. You know what I'm saying? Not not in two, not in uh, century 21. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. when, when somebody pulls over and you walk and you, you like, dang, what's the dude getting ready to do? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, especially, in, especially in Louisville. <laughs> right, right. So he said, you need a ride? I'm like, yeah, man. So I'm, I got in his four by four, took me down the street to the bus stop. Uh -huh. All right. And uh, he says, I said, you know, we was talking. He said, my name is JD. <laughs> you know, I'm, I said, my name is Carlos. I'm the author of 1975, of Tell Two Cities. He said, what? I'm like, yeah. He said, no. Nah. I said, yeah, man. I said, here it is right here. He said, uh, I said, no more suits, LLC.com. That's where you can get it exclusively, you know. He said, all right, I'll look it up, man. So I got people looking looking at it. Uh -huh. I got people looking at it. 
uh, this young lady, I don't know, I forgot her name. She told me her name. She 19. I said, uh, we were sitting in the back of the bus. She had a little kid with her. And uh, I said, I said, hey, here's my book right here. He was like, she's like, yeah, is that your book? She's like, yeah. She said, what's it called? I said, 1975 with Tell Two Cities. She's like, oh, let me see it. So she was reading through it. I said, yeah, you need to uh, tell your friends about it. You know, so she she's on it. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, by, by the word of mouth, man, it's like, I mean, I got GE talking about it. I got, uh, you know, just people, uh, people talking about it. I want, it, I want, it, I want that book. I want that book. I don't care if I have to uh, pay wholesale for it. I want that book. You know what I mean? <laughs> 1975. You know. Uh, but it is, you know, it warms my heart to see that uh, my my words can shape people by you know shape their imagination. I want, I want that book, you know, I want that book. Where, where can I get that book from? You know what I'm saying? That's, uh, that's, 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 I, I was, I was talking to uh, a guard yesterday before I got, before I went to work at GE. I was talking to, I came out the bathroom. I said, I said, excuse me, man. She said, yeah. I said, uh, how you doing? My name is Carlos Jones. He said, I'm doing all right. I said, I got a book out. You do? No, nah, no, you don't. We was talking. She thought I was playing. <laughs> no, nah, you ain't got no book. I said, yeah, I've written a book. I said, hold on. I got time. Let me go back and get my book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she was like, man, I'm proud of you. You know? I said, do you read? My first question to her was, you know, do you read? She was like, yeah, I read sometimes. I said, I got a book. I said, I, I read a book. She said, no, you didn't, you know. And uh, I said, yes, I did. I said, let me go get it. She said, what's it called? I said, 1975. I tell two cities, you know. And she was like, what? I had my mask on so she couldn't understand. So I'm pulling it. I'm like, 1975 would tell two six. So I went and got it and she, you know, she did like that. And uh, it was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to get this. When is it coming out? I said, March 12th. Uh, the pre-orders is uh, February 27th. So, you know, the word is out. Word is out in the Lord. Everybody won't, everybody, if not everybody, just you know, certain people want the book. Uncle Stan even want the book, though. They want that book, man. <laughs> <laughs> Watching this interview, you want it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I want this book. We ain't you know? even got into the concept of it, man. Um, right. real quick, real quick, real quick. I want to give a big uh shout out. To a send a pearl, send a pearl. They out of Charlotte, North Carolina, man. They they doing their thing, man. They just released a new sneak, sneaker. You know what I mean? Right, uh, right. They got a promo code right here. Ascend twenty twenty one. You can get any of their products. They got the socks. Um, Ascend a pearl. That's my brother Leem and them out of Charlotte. They just released their sneaker. You know what I mean? They doing big time stuff out there, and in Charlotte. Um, so these they new eclipses shop the eclipse collection you know what i mean they got the uh the light blue the light gray they got the the black and gold you know what i'm saying so check out the send of pearl movement out mm -hmm. charlotte man you know they they shoes is comfortable i don't have the eclipses yet but i got the rise ones um but they doing the thing man you know what i mean these brothers right. they getting out the mud too you know turning they they struggle into something beautiful, man. You know what I'm saying? It's beauty in the struggle, man. So, you know, these guys um, only know a few people with their own sneakers. Shout out to KD. 
you know what I mean? But Send Apparel, they 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 changing, uh, they trailblazing, man. They trailblazing out there, man. Um, so check out them, check out their movement, check out um what they got going on, man. Ascend apparel, get them new eclipses. They just dropped a documentary too on their Instagram. Check out Ascend Apparel on IG, man. It's where it's at, man. We making it happen, man. Ascend Apparel, man. Okay, okay. Oh, so 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 Los, man, um, how you think, you know, um, you lost both of your parents. You know, you lost Winnie at an early age and you, you talk about that vividly, you know, in the book and then in 1975, back in 88. And then, you know, mm -hmm. we lost mama in uh, 09. What you think they will say about this, man? Like, you know, what, what do you think, like, just, just from, I'm gonna ask you like this, mm -hmm. everything functional. Mama and Winnie, you know, they stay together. You know, they, they, you, you are, you mama firstborn child. You know, uh, I can't say the same about Winnie. Winnie got it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Winnie was a man back in the day, man. Pops was a rolling star. Man. So, you know, think about it from like, you know, like Cosby, right? You know what I'm saying? Like the Cosby's, that's, you got, you got Claire. They say mama look like Claire Huxtable, you know what I mean? And then right. when he's serving the role as Cliff, you know what I'm saying? Um, so like, you grown up now, you know what I'm saying? You, you, uh, you riding, you know what I'm saying? They probably, they probably say they living in Louisville. You riding around the block, you come home. Here, mama, Winnie. 1975 what do you think that their response would be to to this man because it's not it's no though it's a non-traditional right. book it's non-traditional for us to release books too feel me so what do you think that they they response would be to to the physical element of of, of 1975 man I think their response would be, damn, you know, especially when, damn, because mama didn't cuss that much. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but when it was a whole nother, whole nother person. Damn, damn, son, I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as you know, Winnie and I, we were two peas, I mean, I ain't gonna say two peas in a pod, but we was close like brothers. We was 25 years apart, you know what I mean? To release this on our birthday, and I'm off, dog. <laughs> I'm off on that day. Oh, wow. You, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So to release this book on our birthday, it really don't, uh describe me as a person but it describes everybody in the family as a whole you know what i mean uh mama we talk about mama all all through the book you know uh we talk about winnie and you know uh his lifestyle <clears throat> his lifestyle uh like i i was I was talking to Mimi one day on the phone and I said, you know what, Mimi? I don't mean to throw it off a of, you know, subject, but I, I told her, I said, you know what, if Winnie was here, I would sit, I'd be on the, you know, on the porch after work, go to his house, uh, go to J-Town or whatnot, sit, you know, sit and just sit in a rocking chair and just talk to him. You know what I mean? That's how close we were. You know what I'm saying? But uh, <clears throat> mom, I'm proud of you, son. And I hear it every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of you. <clears throat> and I'm trying not to get uh, 
emotional about it, but I can't help but not to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These are people who shape me as as a whole. You know, <clears throat> but uh, when he was my heart and still is and the that's what really broke me as a as a kid i was 13 i was in i was in middle school my grades were up to par but when when he when he died it was like i didn't have no care in the world you know go to school do whatever you want to do. Don't study. You know, I messed that up. But uh, mama, she was like, she was like my backbone. She was like my backbone, man. Like, you can get through this. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, that shit, like, you know, both of them, like, uh, I'm proud of you. You know what I mean? You did something. You did, you accomplished something that I started but didn't finish. So we, you, as you and I, as brothers, you know, I don't want to put two decades in it, but you, you know, you my little brother and therefore, we sharpen each other. You know, you know some stuff that I don't know. I know some stuff that you don't know. So we just bring that all together and put it all together in, into a book. You know, I got I got this. Let me show you this, Carlos. All right, let me let me see that Quint. You know what I mean? Yeah, we can do that. Uh and like I said, within 1975, it was like, I didn't know some, I didn't know half the stuff. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know half the stuff that you, that you sent, you know, sent to me through text or whatnot. I didn't know that. So therefore, when we, was doing 1975, it was new information to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we brought the girls in. They learned so much about my life, you know, and where my downfalls and my upbringings. You know what I mean? And it's like, and I, I, Thank you every day when I talk to you. I'm like, dang, we did this, man. You know what I mean? And I think it's it's our time. It's our time. It's our time to shine. Most definitely, man. I look you know at I mean? it. I look at it, man. It's like I'm trying not to like, you know, for me, I'm trying to, because I, you know, this I just started this podcast, you know, for the authors or whatnot through, you know, no more suits. Um, so I'm trying to be professional, but it's kind of right, hard right. because we talking about the same centerpiece that brought us, you know, brought life to us, you know what I mean? That brought us to this world. And, right. you know, for those who listening, um, when y'all read 1975, you're going to hear about Darrell Salon of Beauty. And, you know, it, it's a lot of beauty salons out there, but it wasn't too many, like, the real salon of beauty. And if you follow me, if you've been following me, if you know about the No More Suits movement, you know what I'm saying? Um, no More Suits is a derivative of the real salon of beauty. You know what I mean? It's an extension of the real salon. It wouldn't be a No More Suits if it wasn't for a the real salon of beauty. You know what I mean? And we come from a bloodline of hustlers. You know what I mean? Grandma and mama owned a, you know, a liquor, a bar, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mama's daddy, Henry, 
you know what I'm saying, owned the liquor store, you know what I mean, he was a milkman, converted that to, you know, converted that milk to liquor, you know what I mean, spirits, that's what they call it, speakeasies, you know what I'm right. saying, um, you know, and here we are now pushing out books, and I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm like, we create books like how mama was creating designs in people's head, man. You know what I mean? Them, them, the, them eccentric, eccentric designs, that culture, you know what I mean? Of, I didn't, I didn't really, you know, when, when I was born, I'm born 95. By that time, the real Salon of Beauty had been out for eight plus years or so. Um, right. So I didn't really get to go to them salons in the city. Only one I went to was the one that was down in the basement. Um, talk about a little bit, man. Like, what was that like? You know what I mean? Like Winston Salem on the, on the mid eighties and the nineties and the people that was coming in and out of that salon um, on North Point and on, uh, you know, uh, Renoda, like what, what was that energy like, man? Like, cause I like, I'm gonna tell you this, like, I feel it. Like, I feel like, I felt like I was there. Like, right. you know what I mean, like them, them rainy days, you know what I'm saying? Where, you know, everybody kind of uh, packed in the salon, like, you know, and that cultural element with the, you know, the Al Greens on the on the spinners that's blasting in the stereo and, you know, right, I mean, right. air, the smell of that hair grease, you know what I mean? Talk about what that was like, man, you know, doing, you know, growing up in that, in that era and stuff, like. It was like, you know, I was, I was the, I want to say I was supposed to tell for a Dur uh, drill salon beauty. You know what I mean? When she had fashion shows, I was in them. You know what I mean? She put me out in the in the spotlight. Uh, the real the real salon of beauty actually started in Winston Salem, but it was originated here in Louisville. Because she, when she, when she started in hair care, she started at your father's mustache on the campus of Louisville, University of Louisville. When she started at your father's mustache, she was the front end manager. And then she started she went to school and then she, you know, was working behind the chair with Daryl uh, Rowland and many others. Your father's mustache was the largest hair salon here in, in Louisville. And that's how, that's how she became Daryl's, Daryl's salon of beauty from your father's mustache to the looking glass which was the second, well, her first largest hair salon, the second largest hair salon in Louisville. Uh, then we moved, we moved to North Carolina in 82, and she was working with Irvin's on uh, 32nd and Patterson. Uh, she worked there for a while. Uh, then she worked with uh, image image makers, no. which is downtown. Downtown, okay. Down where uh, Kiana uh, Boutique is. Mm -hmm. She worked with uh, image make. That was image makers back in the day, across the street from Stouffer's, uh, Conrad's, all three locations. 311. Real quick. Yeah. So Con, when she was at Conrad's, you know, that was like for us, like for for from from my perspective. Right. Conrad's was to and anybody in the city know, you know, uh what I'm talking about, the barbershop or any of the fellas, like Platinum Palace was right. the Mecca for the barbershops in Winston, like doing, you know, 09. 2000 from 09 to like 15 and you know what i'm saying 2015 
Like that was where everybody was getting their chops at. So like everybody in the city, you know what I'm saying? Like niggas from East Forsyth, West Forsyth, you know what I mean? The old cat, everybody. I met a lot of people through Platinum Palace, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Rob, you know, big us the Zeke, you know what I mean? Um, but like Conrad's was that for the, from from listening to you, Conrad's mm-hmm. was that for hairstylists and it's and it was like literally on the same in the same part of East Winston. Um right. but you had said something like about Conrad. So like you was like he he got with the the airport and they was dropping up off gifts, you know, for the people in Rolling Hills, like the kids. Rolling Hills and, and uh Lakeside apartment. What what right was there that? Where, right there where um uh the Indians shoot. The Indians field, yeah, tiny Indians field, mm. you know. What was that like? Man? Well, I can't. I, I I'm trying to put picture that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, him dropping off gifts at Christmas time. Like that's 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 incredible, man. Yeah, I mean, Con Jim Conrad was the name of Winston Self, like Joe Dudley. You know what I mean? He was a big. He was a big. He was the big man in. In uh, Winston Salem, uh, so uh, he every every Christmas he gathered up all the kids from Rolling Hills to uh, uh, Lakeside Lakeside Apartments mm-hmm. and um, gathered them up right there where the Tiny Indians uh, practice and play football. Mm-hmm. And he had Santa Claus in a helicopter. Oh, sure. Throwing, throwing presents down, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you bringing back memories, man. I mean, you know, that's before um, uh, the Y, Patterson Y moved to Waterworks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you had still, I guess you still had a swimming pool right there. Going down Waterworks Road. They, they done built a new one over there. They don't. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it because you've been away from the city. Um, right, right. But they built a new uh, little. It's like a little. It looked like a water park. Um, they built right there, right when you turn into uh, Winston Lake, coming off Waterworks. You turn right, right in. It's a, a little. You know, Grandma would go out there. She'd take Mary and them out there. But uh, they didn't built that since since then. Um, you know, but that's that's dope, man. Like, yeah. um, I feel like that element missing in the city now, man. Like, yeah, it is. I mean, um, uh, like, and now you know, you hear all you hear about every time I call grandma, man, another kid and got shot. You know what I mean? Somebody else, can, you know what I mean? Right there on Highland, you know. I'm like, dang, grandma. Like every, I'm like, Dude, is there any other new news? Like, what's? Right, and I feel right. like. You know that that culture, like you know the way you describe it, Winston, um, uh, from the past, and mm-hmm. then kind of like with the seep through from when I was a kid growing up, and from with little certain things I remember, like um, like the mama taking me to the African stores down in Winston and stuff like that. It make you think of Harlem. You know what I mean? Yeah. It makes you think of like that Harlem. Harlem Renaissance, like Patterson Avenue, sound like 125th Street. You know what I mean? Right. In, in Harlem, because right. you got, you know, obviously you got the the apartments like where y'all grew up, Greenway, and then you go down the block near the Glen Avenue, and then you got mm-hmm. the storefronts and all that stuff, black owned, you know what I'm saying? Black yeah. owned uh stores, you know, we talk about the safe bus company ran by us, you know, like man, that's incredible. Like, that's incredible. Right. And and then like my hope, you know, from from for this project, you know, I hope that the kids, the young adults from, you know, Winston specifically, because this book is directly written for, you know, Winston and and Louisville. But uh my my hope, and then obviously the world gonna hear this story, you know what I'm saying? But like, my hope is that these kids can read this and get some type of inspiration to be like, man, let's put these guns down. 
let's let's come together let's 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 get involved with these businesses like how they was doing back in the day let's let's bring these community the community together um like how we used to be organized you know back in the day you know what i mean even like with the black panther movement they had guns too but they wasn't shooting us they was protecting us right, you know I mean? right. larry little man dr little he he signed my poster he was he had so much stuff when i when i met with him he had a poster of him holding a uh, shotgun right standing mm -hmm. on the front porch you know what i mean defending his defending this woman i forget her name uh, i think she was pregnant you know what i mean that just spoke volume to what like and then Dr. Little, I don't want to spill too much beans. Y'all gonna y'all gotta read about 1970. Y'all gotta read about this in 1975, man, if you want more insight. But like Larry Little met with Fred Hampton. You know what I mean? Fought to get the Panthers in Winston, man. You know what I mean? Like that's that's historic. But he wasn't back then, he didn't know he was making history. He was like, man, I, my people need to be defended. We need the Panthers in Winston. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. They coming for us in Winston. You know, mm -hmm. they had the breakfast, they had the uh, breakfast programs, you know what I mean? They had the, uh, you know, the ambulance systems and in, in Winston, you know what I mean? Like we, Winston, man, that's a, that's a historic city. You yeah, know, yeah. that's a historic yeah. city. I mean, I, like, your book, dude, capture that, man. It's, it's, and I tell you, I tell you, and, and, and then like, just going off of it's, it's so you know, another thing that I, I've observed during this project, dude, is like, like how you talking about, oh, I got a book, man. No, you don't. They don't right. expect you to have a book and expect you to know the knowledge and everything that you got and witnessed in your life. You know what I mean? And so I'm I'm glad we bring a light to that because it's like it's so many people out there like you who know mm -hmm. so much that happened. You know what I mean? Like we representatives just like any of the other historians as representatives, but they got their point of view and we got ours. You know what I'm saying? And 1975 need to be in these kids' history classes, just like they talk about Benjamin Franklin, mm -hmm. George Washington. Martin Luther King and Dr. Malcolm, Malcolm X, you know what I'm saying? Like right. they need to, they need to hear about, like you said, like the book, you know, it's it's about you, but it ain't even really about you. But it's like it's about your life, man. And then the right. thing is, right. like you talk about your story, but like what you witnessed growing up was history. Mm -hmm. Feel me? So that's that's a bar right there. It's your story, but it's it's his story. Right, right. I mean, you know, one, I'm going to go back to mama. Mama always told me, she said, Carlos, you should be a historian. You know, you should be a history teacher. You know, you know a lot about history. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't want to be a history major. You know what I mean? I love history. You know what I'm saying? But see, Quentin, this is the thing. When I was in the eighth grade, going to middle spring, middle school. Mm -hmm. uh, shout, out shout out to you know, yeah. yeah. shout out to yeah. the Springs. You know, and my mom, mama knew my my teacher. Name was Mr. Anderson, black guy. I'm sitting in my North Carolina history class. Reading on these daggone Indians, bro. I did not know. <laughs> I did not know we was talking about my talking about our family, dog. Man, we talked about the the uh, shoot. We talked about the Trail of Tears. You know what I'm saying? The the Indians going from North and South Dakota. You know, and I I didn't know this until. Hey, 30 years, 30 plus years later. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that until we opened up this daggone book called 1975. That's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Dr. Ayo for, yeah. um, you know, our cousin Ayo, she's in uh, Westchester. 
PA. We're going we probably got to bring her on for another, you know, dialogue. Um, Cause she's the one who, uh, you know, we got a credit to for putting all this together because right, right. Um, she talked about how she's the one that told me about 10 cup, you know what I mean? And I brought that to your attention and, you know, we had the conversations. And so again, from my research, on that is um, from, this is my understanding, you know what I mean? Because unfortunately we can't have a sit down with 10 cup, but mm -hmm. from what we can do is piece together what was going on during that time period. And you brought this information and I got to credit you for telling me about the black mountains. Um, so what was happening was during that time period, um, what I and what also what I learned, this is really an interesting fact. So the Lakotas is also called the Sioux. Most people probably know them as the Sioux Indians right. and, and from the Trail of Tears. So what was happening was the colonizers came to obviously they came, they hit the North Carolina, the East Coast first. And so mm -hmm. they was hitting the East Coast, they was pushing us this way, you know out, what I mean? Out, they west. out west, right? Right. And then that's how the Lakotas were up in the Sioux or Lakota Sioux got up in the Dakota regions. But then when they started going for these, the gold rush out West, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They started pushing us off of those lands and then putting us on reserves. And so mm -hmm. they was killing us, but also what they was doing, like our native food up there, since we couldn't grow crops like how we did in the South, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And if people study almanac history, they understand certain regions can only grow certain cr crops. And then that's the, you know, that's Northwest. So a lot of stuff can grow up there. So they was, their ma major food source was the Buffalo. And so right. um, 10 Cup was in that area, North South Dakota, but then he migrated to Louisville, Kentucky, because mm -hmm. this is my, this is my understanding. I, I don't know what, brought him to Louisville, but my understand, understanding was he wasn't with that mess, man. He was like, I got to get out of here because they right, right. took the buffalo from us. They was killing anybody who was trying to stay on this territory where Mount Rushmore is now, feel me? And so Tim Cup migrated back down to Louisville, you know what I mean? And then it was Indians already in, like you say, like Swanee Park, the Swanee Indians, all of them were in that Kentucky area yeah. you know what i mean right. what, what you say about abe lincoln you know abe lincoln but not too far from louisville you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so he's the one he was he's from this is really the land of lincoln in illinois it is called the land of lincoln you know what i mean because that's where he you know moved from i guess kentucky to illinois and um, did his bit was lawyer out there, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But he he's he's from Kentucky, you know, the home of Lincoln. Look at this, man. Check this out. This is a life mask of of Abe Lincoln, a real life mask. So what they did um, to preserve the faces and things like that, like um, this is of his deceased body, they put a mask on it. So it okay. show you that, they say he looked like Dr. Sevy on here. Okay. But it, it show you that uh, he had Negroid features. You know what yeah. I mean? They say his mom was Indian. And if she right. was, or native or indigenous, and if if you parallel that, she might be a cousin. You know what you I'm saying? You never know. So. You never know. I mean, anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Anything can happen. But, um, but man, Los, I don't even think that we, I'm going to say we understand the significance of this project of 75. You got the book, hold it up so people can see it. I don't think people understand the significance of it because, uh, you know, um, down the line, the generations after us Man, that thing look good. That, <laughs> that thing look good right there. Look like, yeah, 
But Big like, up to uh, Mama Duke, my Dukes, yeah, the real drones, you know what I'm saying? I don't think, I don't, because down the line, you know, our, our kids, kids, man, they going to grow mm -hmm. up. They don't have to do all the research. It's going to be right there. You know what I mean? Right, it's like your right. pink cup were to write a book from his time period, the late 1800s. And then we, right. here we are in 2021, reading it like dang you know what i mean like it's like it's like wine you know what i mean it appreciate over time so man dude that thing that's incredible bro that's incredible and and then like i said from a cultural standpoint it's not far off people gonna be able to identify with you know what i mean what you were listening to your your relationships you having kids you losing you know parents you still you know what i mean functioning like and then you keep it so real, you know what I mean? Like even, you know, not not to spill the beans, but you just keep it so real about what happened. You're not making, you know what I mean? There ain't no fairy tale. This ain't right. no fairy tale. It's it's real. You know it's what I'm real. saying? Like, you know, most people that write books, you know, you got the presidents, the Barack Obamas, things like that. Like, and not to shine them, but at the same time, you got a story too. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and, you got the right to put your message on paper, just like Obama got the right to put his message on paper. You know what right. I mean? And 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 not to be biased, but your book gonna be better than Obama book. <laughs> you know New mean? York bestsellers list. <laughs> man, the Trey Fo bestseller, man. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Trey Fo 502 yeah. bestseller, man. So um what what uh let me let me do this real quick. Let me do this real quick. Um, you know, y'all gotta get your natural, your natural food, your natural substances, man. Um, uh, y'all go check out Living Roots Holistic Health. You can come here, you can get your uh organic teas, herbal teas, the sea moss, you know what I'm saying, uh Irish moss gel infused with ginger, only $25 for 12 ounces. So y'all go right on the um, Living Root Holistic Health. Y'all could get that. Um, y'all can uh, you know, got books up here. Um, shout out to my brother Wu. We got Soul Notes Poetry if you into that. Um, Skydive, Self-Defense Tools for the Women. Today is the first day of uh, Women's Appreciation Month. Um, so big ups to the women out there. Uh, the single mothers out there, um, the women who had to sacrifice for their kids, you know what I mean, or the women who's out here sacrificing for their kids every day. Um, Got to make sure you stay protected. Get your her uh, your herbal teas, the Breathe Easy respiratory teas, only $10, man. Um, the immune teas, the digestive teas, man. So y'all go to Living Roots Holistic Health um, you know, I want to vouch for that. You know, a lot of people out here are selling sea moss, but this is the real deal right here. It's a lot of places you get sea moss, but I'm vouching for it. You get that sea moss gel right here from Living Roots Holistic Health, man. It's important to have a healthy diet because you want to make sure you live long and see your kids grow old, man. Um, Los, what's next for you, man? Like, where you see yourself, man, um, you know, with this project, where you feel like 1975 going to take you, you know, what, what, what's going to be that next chapter, man? Um, I, I, what's that last chapter, uh, 2020's vision? Um, what, what do you feel like is going to be that next phase for you, man? Where you see yourself, where you feel like God taking you, man, with this? I don't, you know, I really don't, I really don't know, man. You know, uh, I, I follow when when God leads, you know what I mean? Wherever he takes me, that's where I go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, we probably, I don't know. I don't I don't mind having a a, a second volume of uh 1975, you know. Uh, we might do one about 2020. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We might do one about 2020. I don't know. Uh, 
But I, I really don't know, man. It all depends on what my spirit tells me where to go and how to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what I got. Man don't live by bread alone. <laughs> but by every page in 1975. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> man. I mean, you know, I really don't know, to tell you the truth, though. I don't know. Yeah, man. Let's well, see. Well, I'm, I'm proud. I'm, you know what I mean? As, just you as, gotta get through this one first. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely proud of you, man. Um, I'm proud for us. I'm happy that, you know, your girls was a part of this project. You know what I'm saying? That they, they read through it. They edited. They doing the thing, man. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta, you got. One of your girls at ECU, you know what I mean, doing a thing, you know, she y'all go to uh No More Suits and check out the Black Wall Street Journal, look at our articles. 90% of them written by Carlos's oldest daughter, man. You know what I'm saying? So like she doing the thing, man. You know, proud, what I mean? boy, uh, proud. you know, her yo, know, uh the next one about to go to UNC Charlotte doing her thing. You know, they all had hands on with 1975. Y'all see the credits in the back of the book. Like, <laughs> that's incredible, man. You know what I mean? And then, you know, Harmony and Diamond. Harmony graduated eighth grade, top of her class. You know, mm -hmm. like two years ago, she doing it. She's so smart, scholarly. You know what I mean? Like, I, I told her she going to an Ivy League. That's it's no question. Harmony going to an Ivy League, you know. Diamond doing her thing. That was, you know, mama called her the China doll, um, you know, and then, you know, your son, his spirit is still resides in all of them, all of us, and my son, you know, so like, man, it's, it's, it's a blessing, dude, that, that you, that you took them three days to really, um, to decide to be like, man, we gonna do this. So, uh, you know, man, uh, I'm, I'm happy for you, my guy. I am. I'm, I'm happy for you. Um, you know, it's for you to be standing strong after all you've been through just within the last 10 years. You know, people, you know, sugar honey ice tea in on your name. Um, but for me to still, you know, stand by you and you know, you my brother. So yeah. I, you know, I'm my brother's keeper. And just naturally I'm I'm stand by you through it all, through the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know what I'm saying? And and I see your value, man. You you a valuable person. Um, just to me, to to the city of Winston, to the city of Louisville, you know what I'm saying? Those are two main cities uh in 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 the America, in North America, you know what I mean? So that means North America is the biggest continent country in the world. Mm -hmm. So you, that means you're important to the world, you know what I mean? And, and how you tie these two cities together, I mean, it, it really, you can't even take credit for it because, you know, that the mama and grandma, you know, they migrated from, right, right. from you know, from Louisville back down to, to the trade foe, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like I was saying earlier, them Sioux Indians originated in the North Carolina, in the Carolina region. so. They came back <laughs> to where yep. we originated from, you know what I mean? Just doing the research. And that's just, in, it's incredible how, how everything really ties in, you know, together, man. And the uh, tobacco was what drove the economy during the early 1900s. And, you know, you got RJ Reynolds, you got Brown and Williamson, you give the backdrop on that in 1975 and, how them plants, they had that manufacturer plant, uh, their headquarters in Louisville and grandma was working there and all that dog. Like that's that's a lot of, uh, you know, information that would have uh, been overlooked. You know what I mean? A lot of people from Winston probably had a family member who worked at Brown and Williamson or, um, you know, RJ Reynolds. You actually worked at RJ Reynolds at one point in your life. So yeah, uh, I think that's interesting how you tie that in how to how you tie those two cities together through that through that tobacco company, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um 
But uh, yeah, it's bro, it's been a long road, man. You know what I mean? A long road. Uh, Grandma Dorothy. Dot. So some people is Dotty, Dot, Dotty or Dot. You know what I'm saying? D O T. Grandma. You know what I'm saying? It's like she she was my she is my uh backbone amber you know amber baker she they know her name they, now <laughs> they, they i mean you know other than mama those were the two main women that that raised me you know what i'm saying and big shots out to uh uh jackie jordan you know what i mean he you know he's like you know, I like a. I ain't gonna say he was my step grandfather. He was my grandfather. Before I ain't gonna say before Ashley and all of them, uh, because I know how it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? But don't get into that. He, he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, he raised me. You know what I'm saying? He raised me from a little boy to a man. You know, I'm. You know what I'm saying? So big ups to. Uh, Jackie, Jack of all trades, Jack of spades, Jack of clubs, Jack of hearts. Jack. <laughs> His name go with everything, you know what I mean? I was, yeah. I was like, Papa, man, you know what I'm saying? What's your middle name? I ain't got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Jack I'm Jordan. Like, I said, man, I said, I said, Papa, man, a person has a middle name. Oh, not, not me. <laughs> I ain't got a middle name. It's just Jackie Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Home. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, but what 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 shed light on me? Uh, you know, me and Reese, we we came to the house, you know what I'm saying? Go see grandma and papa. And we was in a van, and I'm like, she was like, Carlos, why you don't call Papa? Paul, Paul, why you just call him Jack or uh, Jackie? I said, because I grew up calling him Jackie. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't dawn on me until later after we, we got a divorce. You know, you know what? I could call him Paul Paul because he, he, he was my grandfather. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, that's when I start calling him Popo. I ain't call him by by his first name. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, man, it's it's like oh, out of those four, you know, four people, well, Uncle Stan, Uncle Carlos, Uncle Nay, uh, Uncle Doug, Uncle Bill, you know what I'm saying? These people raised me to the man I am today, you know? Uh, but uh, it's like, dang, you know, I'm here, you know? I I still have kids I gotta raise. But uh, <clears throat> it's like, dang, I'm still in the awe, man. Yeah. Like, dang, did I do this? <laughs> You know, no, I didn't do this. We did it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I, I thank you as well. You know, like we say now, you know, we give everybody they, they flowers right now. Don't wait until they get six feet under and give them their flowers. You know, uh, uh, Amber is the one that gave you the nickname Master Quentin. Because <laughs> you took over everything, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it's like, but uh, yeah, man, it's, 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 it's been a road, you know what I mean? I even know what I go through on a day to day basis, I still get up put my, my pants on and my shoes on. I, 
go do what I gotta do and hit that grind until what? 9.30 at night, you know what I'm saying? Every day. Every day, every, every day. day. You know, uh, I'm no, you know, I'm no stranger of hard work, you know. Uh, like mama used to tell me, she said, cause if you want something, you go get it, you know. Uh, and uh, and I, I thank her for that. You know what I'm saying? My father, he was, he was, uh, he did what he did, you know. Uh, he did what he had to do. Yeah, he did what he had to do. Yeah. And, you know, he was a hustler. Yeah. He was a jack of all trades, you know what I'm saying? And if he was here today, I, you know, I thank him for it, you know what I'm saying? No doubt. No you doubt. Know? Um, yeah. And then I want to say this too, like for anybody who's listening to this, who who read my book, Alarm Clock, or if you haven't read my book, this is like I get it. <laughs> not only do you got to get it, but you got to get this. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to check this out. Shout out to check this out. Shout out to Amon. You got to get his book too. But um, you know, if you read the Alarm Clock, it's like the alarm clock is like the Godfather part one. And 1975 is the Godfather part two. You know what I mean? And anybody that watched the Godfather or who 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 a big Godfather fan understand what I'm talking about. Cause you you realize that part two is really part one. You know what I'm saying? They came from Sicily over to the States. We came from Louisville over to the NC State. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like young Mike Corleone, but like Lauren Clock, you know what I mean? The is gonna highlight 1975. You know what I mean? And 1975 is gonna shine light onto the Lauren Clock and, and really book arounds for that matter. So like you under you get a better understanding of the Lauren Clock, which is really straightforward, but you'll understand it a lot more once you read 1975 because that's like it's like 1975 moving up into where we are now. Like it wouldn't be an alarm clock if it wasn't for 1975, ironically. And it wouldn't be a 1975 if it wasn't for an alarm clock. You know what I mean? So it's really, I think that's really dope. You know what I mean? And we probably have it set up to where we have the collection, the collection set up where you can get, you know, all three of these pieces, 1975 alarm clock, and book of rhymes, you know what I mean, when y'all on the on the site or whatnot. Um, but but yeah, my brother, like I think what what we doing is, you know, is incredible. Um, and just where we are with technology, you know, the way it, that I'm able to connect with you. I remember our first time uh, when I was living out on Old, Old Greensboro Road, and we used to talk on the phone all the time. I'm like, right. oh, man. Like, you know, you got the Obama phone and shit. <laughs> so I couldn't see you for a long time because, you know what I mean? Like, we calling, you know what I mean? We only talk on the phone. I'm like, hold on, man. You go on Facebook message. I called. Now we was able to connect. You know what I'm saying? I'm able to see you. Now we got Zoom and stuff like that. So, right. you know, it's we, we stay connected, man. For those of y'all don't know, me and Los talk every damn day. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. It's been like right. that, so um, it's gonna continue to be like that, man. I can, you know, you all I got out here, you know what I mean? That's right, what right. Doing. So, um, man, we we we'll, we we'll wrap this up. Um, before we go, I uh, want to go ahead and give a shout out to Ground Up Distribution. Where we at? Where we at? We said we said to send y'all. This is my first time, second time doing this. Shout out! So shout out to Good Ground Up Distribution. Um, check out what we got. Go to the eShop if you want to learn about uh, dispatching, how to be an independent freight dispatcher. Check out the three pillars of dispatching web series. You learn how to set up your own um, dispatching business. You know what I mean? How to get equipment financing. We had a brother named Elliot Washington on that course. 
uh, came in and talked about how to get financing so you can get trailers, tractors, all that, and uh, get passive income. We got merch on there. Um, you know, the good Shot Town snapbacks, these are on fire right here. Uh, you know, so check out Ground Up Distribution dot com that's ground up distribution.com it's a lot of people now who's looking to get into transportation that's an 800 billion dollar industry um so if you want to learn more about that go to ground up distribution.com you know what i mean so uh yeah man los uh mm -hmm. we, we'll wrap this up what's your what's your final words for the people dog love peace and happiness Back in the day, we used to say, love, peace, and hair grease, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no <laughs> no uh, Gorilla Glue, no Gorilla Glue, you know what I mean? I, but uh, yeah, love, peace, and happiness, love, peace, and hair grease, from the, from the view to the Trey Foe, to the Chattanooga, Choo Choo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I wanna give shout outs to, uh, the late, the great Dr. Maya Angelou. Uh, she she was one of my, she was one of the, the real Solana Beauty clients. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to uh, uh, shoot, Sylvia, Sylvia uh, Hamlin, Sprinkle Hamlin. Shout out to Larry Leon Hamlin, may you rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? These are the people that, that shaped me. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, Gail Anderson, you know, much love to her and her family. Baba, Baba, Baba Joseph Anderson. You know what yes, mean? sir. Yes, sir. Force. <laughs> yes, yes. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, man, that's, that, I think that's all I got, man. Uh, I'm glad you you got me on, man. I I enjoyed it. You know, I could talk about it all day, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, but um, uh, uh, yeah, shoot. <laughs> so so y'all, uh, y'all can get a 1975 um, exclusively on No More Suits LLC.com. But if you want to go directly to it. Uh, you go to no more soups llc.com slash 1975 los that's los okay there's no more soups llc.com slash 1975 los and then on there you'll be able to get your copy of the book hold that book up for him one more time los you'll be able to get your copy of the book. Let's see that back. Let me see the back of that, man. You know what I mean? That, that, that you'll be able to get that on that link. You'll be able to get your 1975 merch. Um, you'll be able to find out everything that we got in store. You'll be able to subscribe to everything that the company got going on. This is an exclusive. You're not getting this on Amazon. You're not getting this on Barnes and Noble. You're not getting this on 123 Books. You're not getting it on ABC Books. You feel me? You're getting it at no more suits, LLC.com. You know why? Because we control our narrative. <laughs> we just ended with that, man. You right. know what I'm saying? We here for forever, man. Los, I love you, my brother. Look forward to the future, man. 100. Oh, it's only, it's it's only a, the beginning. It's a, another, another guy I want to uh, shout out. Daryl Hunt. You God know, his soul. Daryl Hunt, you know, he... Uh, he was a trailblazer in Winston Salem. As you know, 1984 is a, is a chapter in my book, and it talks about Daryl Hunt. And uh, I just spoke with his nephew a few days ago, and I told him, Lopes, you need to get this book, dog. This book is about you. This, this book is about Daryl Hunt, your family. You need to get this book. Um, uh yeah, me and Los, we we go way back, you know. Uh matter of fact, we go way back to high school, you know what I'm saying? Uh yeah, Carlos that's way, that's way back. <laughs> Cause you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean Carlos, Carlos Eaton Rice, Carlos Jones, Carlos Claggett, you know, all of us, we all 
we uh we go back to North Forsyth, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout Big out to North Forsyth Vikings. You know what I'm saying? Class '94. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, everybody need to get this book. They can. If you don't know, you're gonna know, and you're gonna relate because you've been through 1975. You're gonna relate, you know, to the to the young generation. If you don't know, you're gonna know. Get 1975, a tell of two cities. Tell of two cities, a non-traditional <laughs> history book. <laughs> I yeah. Yeah, we out, we out. We out. <laughs>